Welcome you to our worship service from Gordon Street Christian Church. We are glad that you are joining us in worship of our Lord who has been so wonderful and good to us. In the way of announcements, uh, next Sunday, October the 17th, uh, we will be uh, having our homecoming here at the church and in our in-person worship uh, at Gordon Street. Uh, we will be having Reverend Phil Jones as our guest preacher. We are looking forward to him being with us, and we invite all of you who can come to come and be a part of that service. Uh, we will not, however, have our homecoming dinner because of the pandemic. Uh, hopefully, uh, the pandemic will ease sometime before so long, and we can uh, begin to uh, go about things as we always did before. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship this morning is from the Psalms, Psalm 37, verse 39. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. Our hymn of praise is number 67, O oh God, our help in ages past.
Would you bow with me for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer? Lord, you have told us that in the world you will have trouble, but fear not, I have overcome the world. In times when trouble overwhelms us, help us know that you are with us, even though we cannot feel your presence. Help us know that you hear our prayers, even when we can detect no answer to our prayers. Help us know that you will rescue us, even though in our eyes all seems to be lost. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since, then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you today with joy and thanksgiving that you have loved us with an everlasting love, that you have been present with us through all the circumstances of life. We thank you that even in the worst days that we experience, we know that you are surrounding us with your love, even in those times when we cannot feel your presence. Help us to grow stronger in faith and in dedication to you. Help us that we might be used in your service, whether the times be good or the times be evil. We pray that you will forgive us of our sins, for we have sinned against you. We ask that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we will be cleansed from unrighteousness, that we will be strengthened against temptation, and that we will continue to serve and glorify you with the things that we say and the things that we do. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are in distress of whatever kind it might be. We ask that your presence be with them. We pray for ourselves that you will search our hearts and find our deepest needs and fulfill them in accordance with your will. We pray for ourselves that you will help us that we might yield ourselves unto your service so that we might be instruments of your blessing to others around us. We pray for your church in this place that we might be faithful in doing your will and carrying out the mission you have given us to do. We pray that you will help us to love one another 
and love others in the same way that you have loved us. We pray that your church throughout our state and nation and world will be faithful in sharing the good news of God's love for all people and your saving power that is available to all people. We pray for our nation and all nations that they might learn to walk in pathways of righteousness and peace. We pray that as we read and study your holy word that we will gain insight and understanding. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who came and suffered and died and rose again, and who offers us the gift of life that is abundant and eternal. Amen. <clears throat> Our scripture text today is taken from the Psalms, the 22nd Psalm, beginning with the first verse and going through the 15th verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning. O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. <clears throat> I wonder sometimes what kind of relationship a lot of people have with God. Throughout my life, I have heard so many say, Oh, you should not question God. It is wrong to question God. It is wrong in any way to offend or affront God. And I understand what they are saying, but it seems to me that a good relationship is a relationship in which people can be honest with one another when the two parties in the relationship are able to say what needs to be said, 
when the honesty is such that difficult things can be said, can be discussed, can be worked out. I understand that some are fearful of offending God, fearful that if they say the wrong thing, if they ask the wrong question, then God will strike back at them. And yet, if you have studied the scripture, you will find that again and again, people did dare to question God. You remember Job, So many have heard his story how he was suddenly stricken. He who had been prosperous, who had had a wonderful life, he who had been faithful to God in every way, suddenly was stricken with all kinds of calamities and disasters, and even his very health was touched so that he was in pain and unable to do much. Remember Job questioned God. Job wanted an audience with God. He wanted to demand God to tell him why, after all of this, he was suffering the way that he was. We remember Moses. I suppose a lot of people don't remember this account in the life of Moses, but Moses, when the people of Israel were, and he were out in the wilderness and they were causing all kinds of trouble, Moses cried out to God, Why have you burdened me with all this people? And he even got to the point that he said, If you cannot help me, if you will not help me with this burden, then just take my life. Moses was not afraid to question God, to ask God honest questions, to be honest with how he was feeling in his own life. Perhaps it was that uh, he was in such anguish he no longer feared what God might do. I don't know. And maybe that's how it was with our psalmist. The psalm is Psalm 22. It is a lament. To God, I don't know, I don't know that anyone knows exactly what this psalmist was going through, but he was in deep distress. He had been faithful to God, he had trusted God all of his life, and all of a sudden he finds himself in this situation of trouble, trouble that was so deep, he knew that There was no help for him unless it did come from God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Here was one who... In the troubles that he was facing was in such distress he could not detect God's presence with him. He could not hear an answer or see an answer from God when he prayed. He cried out to God whom he had trusted and it seemed that God was silent during all of this when he needed him so badly. I cry by day but you do not answer And by night, but find no rest, whatever the trouble was, he could not sleep day or night. He was in agony. This psalmist, with all the troubles that he was facing, was not afraid or perhaps had lost his fear of God after what he was suffering, maybe what God would do to him really did not matter. Or maybe he realized that God was such a God that he could cry to him for help, and if he did not understand, God would understand that he was going through so much. I am a worm and not human, 
on top of everything else that he was facing. The people around him, people that should have been supporting him in his time of trouble, were not supporting him at all. You ever heard of being kicked when you're down? That's what these people apparently were doing to the psalmist. He was scorned by others, despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, they said. Let him deliver. You were one who was faithful to him. You trusted in him. Let him deliver you now. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Mocking, ridicule, how evil people can be sometimes, how cruel. It's not something just in our day and time. It was thousands of years ago as well like vultures circling a wounded animal who cannot wait for it to die. And yet, in spite of his trouble, in spite of the fact that he could not see or hear an answer from God to his complaints, in spite of the pain he was enduring, he still believed in God. He still trusted that somehow, some way, some time, God would deliver him. You know, many times in Scripture and many times in in everyday life today, we hear of people who have overcome all kinds of trouble. They've been through trouble, been through trouble, They've been through darkness and all of that, and then all of a sudden, the light shines, the trouble ends. They realize that God has been with them all the time. They bless and praise God, and we often see it from that point of view. But the psalm gives us the point of view of the one who's in the midst of the trouble, the point of view of one who looks ahead and sees nothing but darkness, the point of view of one who does not know how things are going to end. But even then, the psalmist trusts that God has not gone away forever. You are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, in you they trusted and were not put to shame. They too endured some hard trials, some times when they wondered if they would survive. But in putting their trust in God, God in his own good time brought deliverance. And so the psalmist felt somewhere down in his heart, in spite of everything, that deliverance would come. It was you, he said, who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Somehow or another, the psalmist knew that beyond the darkness, beyond the shadows, God was waiting to deliver his own. He couldn't see that deliverance as yet. He could see all those surrounding him, attacking him like ravening and roaring lions. He could see that his own health was failing. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My bones are out of joint. My mouth is dried up. My tongue sticks to my jaws. He could see that he was in danger of the very death that would come to all of us sooner or later. 
we read this psalm and we remember that there are many in our world today who are struggling with struggles that they know there is no help but God. There are many in our world today who pray and it seems as if God is not hearing them. There is no answer that they can detect. There are many who ask God to stay near, but he is not close enough that they can feel his presence. There are many who through struggles of one kind or another, maybe it is the sickness of a loved one, maybe it's their own sickness, maybe it is some other trouble that is so burdening their lives. But those who know the Lord, who know his goodness and mercy, know his, his graciousness and his love, know that in spite of what they are feeling, in spite of what they are enduring, in spite of a tragic end, very possibly, they will still be able to depend upon God. You may have recognized the beginning of this psalm was quoted by our Lord himself, the one who came into the world who lived a life as God wanted a life lived, who constantly was speaking with God, constantly doing his will, constantly showing his love for God. And then on the cross, agony unlike any, any of us have ever experienced. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There are times when our hearts cry out in anguish. But it's okay to cry out in anguish. It's okay to feel that God is not near. But somewhere deep inside, may we have had such a relationship with God that we know in spite of the circumstances that he will not forsake us forever. Our Lord Christ himself proved that to us. So may in the deepest darkness, in the worst of anguish we might experience, may we know that God will not finally forsake us or leave us. Thanks be to God.
when we come to the table, we remember something that was horrible. The world turned against the very Son of God through whom the world was made. He loved us enough that he accepted our hostility. He accepted the pain and suffering and even death. At this table, we remember that sacrifice, a sacrifice of love. But at this table, too, we also remember and experience that our Lord Christ was raised from death and he is here present with us as the host at this table. This bread reminds us of his body. This cup reminds us of his blood. As we partake, we are reminded that nothing we could do could earn such love or such sacrifice. And yet we are reminded as we feed on this bread and drink from this cup that we're able to eat because, and drink because the Lord himself loves us, invites us, welcomes us to this table as part of his own family. Let us pray. Lord, at this table... We confess our sins. We confess how we were hostile to you. We give thanks at this table that your love overcame that hostility, that your love defeated sin and death, that your love invites us to come into your presence and to partake and be blessed. Help us that we will forsake sin and turn our hearts toward you. Help us that our hearts will overflow with your love so that we will be joined to you and to one another, that we will be able to feast together in love and at peace with one another. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner also, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, for the gift of your love, for the gift of abundant and eternal life, for the gift that was given at so high a cost, we give you thanks. May we be transformed 
by your love that we might be instruments of your love and grace to others. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.